Hi there, you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Alana here with my co-host Jamie, and I am going to ask the question, how's it going, Jamie? It's going. It's going well. What is it that you say better than better than you deserve? Oh, yeah. Dave Ramsey, better than <laughs> I deserve. <laughs> I knew you quoted somebody. I couldn't remember who. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he always says better than I deserve. How are you well, doing, Jamie? Dave? Theology aside, given that we're all, you know, sinners who deserve hell, I think you deserve to be doing really, really, really well. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) Aside from the fact, you know, that our sins have separated us from God, I think you're doing great. (laughs) You you really deserve the fiery pit, but I wish you well. (laughs) I saw a funny cartoon. It had like uh, this little dog and... He was having this crisis because his owner was asking, like, who's a good boy? And he's like, am I really good? There is no one good but God, you know? <laughs> dog theology. There is My no other- one good but dog. <laughs> That's right. The other one I like was, you know, and on the seventh day, God made a dog and it was good, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> I love that. That is cute. <laughs> like, why is it that we all do that to dogs? Like, is this something ingrained in us or is this something like we hear other people do it and now we all do it? I don't know, but it's funny. I used to work at multiple vet clinics, um, mm-hmm. not at the same time, but different times. And mm-hmm. I always baby talked the animals and Mm -hmm. the technicians I worked with, we all baby talked the animals. Mm -hmm. So our kids, so we haven't had a dog in our house since before my two youngest can remember. My oldest was like seven. And so when we got our puppy, the kids all were like, Oh my gosh, mom talks weird to the dog. Like you baby talk. They haven't seen me with a puppy, like, you know, with a dog baby talking it. And it's, it was probably really intense when we first got him because he was so tiny, but I still do it. But yeah, it was, it's just funny that, uh, that my kids were just like, we've never seen this side of mom. Well, it's super cute. Gimli is like about three months old now. He's your little Malamute pup. Your big Malamute pup? No joke. He's gaining like a pound a day. Oh my God. Crazy. But he and Scott, my husband, are like these super cute buddies. Like they've got this super cute. It's the first time that Scott's had like a dog. Like Kitty very much was like, she was my dog. She liked mommy time. And I mean, all the dogs see Scott as alpha that we've ever, and we've, we've had several dogs. They all see Scott as alpha, but this is a super special, like when Scott comes home, like Gimli runs and he's like, my friend has arrived. It is super, Aww. super cute. And Archie has a similar bond with Matt. And Aww. I was afraid that that wouldn't be the case because I do mm-hmm. a lot for him. And so exactly, I was afraid. Right. And, you know, our other dogs, the first one was his first, the first dog that we ever had. That okay. was like our first child. Mm-hmm. Matt had him first when he was in college. Okay. And then I kind of came on the scene, married in. And <laughs> uh-huh. so it, it was established that he was his dog, you know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of nervous about whether he, I really wanted for him for the dog to love him and to be. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he really does. And I think he just, it's like, and we went to dog obedience class and they were saying, you know, you want to treat, teach your dog not to jump on people, but Mm -hmm. my husband loves it. He loves it when he jumps. (laughs) And he jumps up and he puts his little Mm -hmm. paws up on him and wants to Mm -hmm. give him a hug. So we've been working on like, Jumping by command by saying hug. Exactly. Letting mm-hmm. him do it and then having him respond immediately with off. And so we've oh, tried to work on yeah. that, but you know, but he yeah. loves having him like jump up and hug him. And he does this other thing where he pounces. So yeah, anyway, I don't want to go too, too much in detail. No, no, no. I, I, of I our lives the detail. With I the dog. Hear- okay. So the dog sleeps in our bed most of the time. He starts huh? off the night in our bed, but we have a crate mm-hmm. in our room because he is really not like our other dogs. Our other dogs had wanted to always be with us, especially the first one had separation mm-hmm. anxiety. Oh, poor thing. This one, he likes his own space. And I think some of it is it's been warm. And so he likes being on the floor gets, more. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And not on the, the bed mattress. But That makes sense. But he always starts off the night in our bed. 
And mm-hmm. usually he's been waking up like maybe 5 a.m. to use the bathroom sometimes and I'll take him mm-hmm. out and then I come back up and he wants to go in his crate and because we can't oh, trust him alone in our room with stuff right now. Yeah, yeah. And so he wants to go in his crate and lie down. So he'll go in his crate. But as soon as I, um, as soon as I bring him back from the next bathroom break, like when it's time to get mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. or the, I'll put him on the bed and he pounces on Matt. Like he does oh, this little cute. thing where he just like literally jumps up off the bed and pounces like right on his chest and starts like licking his ear. And he does this, like he's got it, Matt has a goatee. And so he like nibbles on his goatee. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just so yeah. cute. It's just Gidley so does that to Scott's beard. It's a, yeah. Yeah, he's a so, nibbler. So apparently fun. Malamutes, you can train them to sing. I really want to like, hear that. Our kids want me to teach. He is so vocal. Yeah, yeah, Archie's not, so I don't think we have any hope. Yeah. So have you? No. Um, a little bit. Like he and Scott, they just have these like five minute long conversations. It's just in like howl. <laughs> and yeah, it's super it's cute. cute. Oh, I want to hear that on I want to hear that on air sometime. You we need to well, hear I was howling. recording I was recording a podcast for my writing show and, and they were doing it out there. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's my husband howling. Some half of the howls are him, half of the howls are actually a dog. <laughs> If you can tell the difference, you get a special gift. That's right. That's right. Well, today we are excited to bring you guys a coffee break episode. These are really fun for us. These are where you guys submit topics or questions that would be fun for you to cover. Um, They tend to be a little bit more informal, laid back, and it's an amazing chance for Jamie and I to hear kind of what's on your heart. So that's what we love about the coffee breaks. You guys can submit your questions, or even if it's not like a specific question, even if it's like a, hey, I've always wondered about this. Can you talk about this more? You can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. Um, we'll go into today's question in a minute, but let's do, um, it's been a super long time since we're doing a new batch of recordings. What's something like that you're super thankful for right now? I am thankful for fall. The weather yeah, has been just, I love the fall. And mm-hmm. uh, in Alaska, we do get a fall. It's not. And sometimes it's two and a half weeks long. That, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's better than Arizona where it was like summer and then spring and then summer really? again, you know. Yeah, that would kind of sink. There was some winter like there, in Arizona. Mm-hmm. We got some winter too, but not a huge fall. I, yeah. I love the fall, especially mm-hmm. being from the East Coast and, you know, like, the, oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, Shenandoah Valley. I mean, just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but um, I love the fall and the weather has been really nice. And I've just been thankful to um, just enjoy the kind of yeah. cooler weather. And mm-hmm. second thing, I know you didn't ask me for two, but I just realized I've been complaining in my mind about just not being able to get it together with school for the kids, but I'm so mm-hmm. thankful they're home. I love yeah, yeah. home. Like I am Good. like looking back, I'm like, this is a gift. I, I, mm. I always am sad when they go back to school right? and it's really a gift to have them home this year. So yeah. I'm happy. That's cool how that worked out. I'm super glad for you. Um, I haven't told you yet, but we actually ended up having to take my oldest, my 14 year old into the doctor to get a COVID test yesterday. Um, bottom line, he's fine. But so that's obviously what I'm thankful for. The longer story is he woke up with a pretty bad sore throat and he's been working part time in like handling people's food and things. It's sort of like, you know, if, if he's sick, we need to know it immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're in such a small community that like, we're not going to be the family that spreads COVID to everybody. Like right. we're just not. So um, I'm really, really thankful. We were able to get him a rapid test right away. It, you know, we took a solid 10 minutes sitting in the waiting room to get the results. It was negative. They tested for strep also. It's probably just like an allergy thing and like an air quality thing. Um, so we're so, so thankful that that's good. healthy and that we're all healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, we have all been feeling the allergy stuff this fall mm-hmm. and we went camping this weekend and even mm-hmm. the dog his eyes really? got a little bit red oh, baby. like you know a little more gunky than usual not bad yeah. and it kind of went away mm-hmm. when we got home but yeah it's I think interesting us, the whole family is yeah a little scratchy because I, yeah I picture that being a spring thing but I guess something there's something in the air right now so every year in the fall I get kind of okay. hoarse and raspy okay 
Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were again, so, so thankful that he's fine. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah. Well, should we open up with a word of prayer and then dive in today's question? Yeah, let's do it. And instead let's of, I always feel it. kind of disingenuous, like sneaking in the title during the prayer. Right, right. So I'm just gonna, let's just, the question let's and then, just say yeah. the question. Yeah. Today's question is from Rebecca who asked, how do you pray consistently when you wonder if God even hears you? I know even Jesus wondered if God heard him. My God, why have you forsaken me? So Alrighty. we're going to pray for that. God, we just thank you for just all of the things that we have to be thankful for, just for um, for Alana's oldest, having the negative COVID test, for the beautiful fall that you've given us, for those of us with kids at home, for school, um, that whether it was planned or not, God, we just give you thanks for the opportunity to have them with us, even when things don't seem like they're at 100% or they're not going the way that we hope, God, it's a gift to have them at home. And we just um, lift this time up to you to pray for this question from Rebecca. Lord, help us to just guide our discussion, help us to really touch the issues um, that will answer Rebecca's question just totally to the heart of, of why she's asking. And we do pray for Rebecca today, just that you would bless her and deepen her prayer life and meet her with every, every question and every, every issue that, that comes up in her faith walk in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Alrighty. So yes, thank you, Rebecca, for answering this. I think that I kind of see this almost as two different questions. You know, one is more about consistency in your prayer. Yeah. And then it feels like one of the big roots is this idea of like, just not even being sure if God hears you, which yeah. do you want to start? Which do you want to address first? Um, well, I think maybe to start to, to wonder about the idea of God not hearing you. Yeah. Um, so, cause she brings up Jesus and mm -hmm. I actually have on here the, like Psalm 22 is mm -hmm. the original mention of Jesus is quoting. It's yeah. what Jesus is quoting. And mm -hmm. so, you know, in his moment, and I did read a commentary about, this because I was thinking, you know, is he just kind of quoting back to scripture, reminding everyone so that it like kind of cryptically saying, yes, I am the Messiah. They would know the scripture and, and reference it. But I was reading this one commentator that was like, anyone that thinks that he was just simply throwing a bone out to people doesn't understand the agony that he was going through. And the fact that, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is obviously a commentator's take on it. But this was truly, yes, he was probably knowingly saying it in these words, but he felt forsaken because he and was. It's, yeah. It's for the very specific reason that he was experiencing the entire wrath of exactly. all of the sins of humankind at that exact moment. So Absolutely. honestly, yeah, I would not take that verse to mean that Jesus doubted that God heard him. No. And even the idea of being forsaken is different than being heard. Right? It is. Like, I can leave the house and my puppy can be crying at the window. I still hear that puppy crying, mm -hmm. but I'm still walking away. So I still hear, I, I, that's where I would also um, kind of take the difference. I don't think that that verse means that Jesus doubted God heard him. We actually have in John 11, Jesus says specifically, I know that you always hear me, yeah. right? We've got that as a very specific quote from Jesus himself. Jesus knew God always heard him, but mm -hmm. at that moment on the cross, as he was suffering agony that no one else who ever is going to live can even imagine, mm -hmm. he for sure felt forsaken. Yeah. So, well, and one really interesting thing about this Psalm is it starts off with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so mm -hmm. far from saving me? So far mm -hmm. from my cries of anguish. I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, I find no rest. And it just kind of has this, you know, um, talks about him being mocked and scorned. But by mm -hmm. the time you get to the end of the psalm, you get to, you know, verses 27 through 31. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Um, talking about how they will proclaim his righteousness, declaring mm -hmm. it to a people yet unborn. So God was there all along. And the psalmist yeah. knew that. And Jesus, I believe, knew that. Mm -hmm. I think, like you mm -hmm. said, this, why have you forsaken me? You're not answering my cries. 
there had to be, you know, I think about, I feel like we need to have, you know, uh, Pastor Scott back on to talk about the theology of the Trinity and this mm -hmm. doctrine mm -hmm. of these, you know, the Father and the Son are one, mm -hmm. and yet there had to be, because of the sin, if he was truly taking that sin on mm -hmm. himself, this was the first time in all of eternity mm -hmm. that there was a separation because sin separates yeah. from God. So we don't know exactly what that looked like. But, but we, we do know it was a very unique experience that sure. really only applied to Jesus on the cross at this moment. Yeah. And there had to be a barrier in some way that, you know, it felt he felt forsaken. But I think that's a great parallel because in our prayer yes. life, there are times when you wonder, does God even hear you? I don't sense God. I don't mm -hmm. hear him. I don't feel his presence. I don't see his movement. So is he right. even there? Right. I think the fact that Jesus went through this horrific separation from God absolutely makes him able to sympathize with our weaknesses. Like Hebrew talks about, he knows what it's like to feel cut off from God. Um, but, you know, let's just remind ourselves that God does always hear you. And Jesus did know that. Um, it's John eleven forty two where Jesus says, I know you always hear me. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that we always have the, the heart knowledge and it doesn't feel, it doesn't mean we always, you know, are convinced in our souls that we're heard, you know, but um, let's at least cover the logic and the truth that yes, God always does hear you. But yeah, sometimes we do feel very cut off for him. And then for sure, that's going to make it hard for us to maintain prayers. You know, it would be like if Scott and I, set our minds to talk for half an hour a day when he comes home from work and the whole time he's on his phone, just kind of be like, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. You know, I'm going to have a hard time feeling like I've connected to him, which is going to make it feel hard to maintain that consistently. Um, so yeah, before we go into the consistency, I'm trying to pull her question back. I just lost yeah. it. What's the part? How did she word it? Um, okay when you wonder if God even hears you. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's start with that. We know God hears us, but that doesn't mean right. that we're immune from feeling like he doesn't. Right. So why are we feeling that way? I think there are a lot of different reasons that mm -hmm. we could mm -hmm. feel that way. Yeah. So Janie and I have kind of created like an informal triage for this question because um, it comes up so much. It's not just Rebecca <laughs> who's wondering this. So um there's not really a specific order, but I think a great place to start if you're if you're really feeling like there is a massive disconnect between you and the Lord. Um, start with some soul searching. Is there unconfessed sin in your life? And that's not to say that you need to approach God perfectly. It does not mean that, you know, if you um, ate that extra bowl of ice cream or, you know, whatever, whatever your pitfalls are. I was trying to think of something that wouldn't like make somebody feel actually guilty. <laughs> so, whatever those things are. like, like That made got, me feel real guilty. Just I'm, FYI. I was not pointing right at you. <laughs> You're grumpy with the dog, whatever it is. Um, I'm not talking about that, but just like, is there a massive unaddressed sin that you need to confess? But that's, that's really just the first question, like feeling separated from God can be a whole list of other things. So what are some of the other questions um, that people could ask? I, I think that one of the reasons that people feel distant from God maybe is that they might not have a relationship with prayer with God outside of mm -hmm. asking for things. I think there's an underlying Ooh. guilt, like, yeah. like, like prayer guilt, which mm -hmm. that's, that's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie that keeps us from approaching God. Amen. Yep. But you could ask yourself, is your prayer life really out of balance, mm. right? Um, we do this a ton, but let's take it. marriage as an analogy. So if Jamie came to me and said, I'm feeling distant from Matt, what should I do? I can't just start by saying, well, you need to make sure that from 5 to 5.30 every day you do this. And you need to make sure that each conversation you begin with, dear Matt, I'm so thankful that you're my husband. Like, There's not a formula. Really, the, the way to address this is to figure out in your specific situation, well, you know, what is going on? Is it busyness? Right? That's, that's a huge thing. Um, is it busyness? Are you avoiding God out of guilt? Are you avoiding God out of fear that maybe he's going to ask you to do something hard or scary? 
sometimes it's just a physiological thing. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you feeling okay? Are you struggling with like a chemical depression that's making it hard? Like all of those can for sure come into things that you ask yourself as well. And yeah, and I think another thing could be um, if you have a history of like a recent history, especially of what you perceive as unanswered prayers. Mm, yeah, prayer disappointments. There could be disappointments that make you just mm -hmm. feel like, what's the point? I've been praying exactly. for all these things and this person died, this mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. ended, you know, what's yeah. the point of praying? Um, and sure. that's a very real pain and that's a very real loneliness. And yeah, yeah. And so let's, let's do a little more digging to this question specifically of wondering if God hears you. Cause lots of us go through seasons where we feel distant from God, but this question of wondering if God even hears you, um, I, I want to dive into that a little bit more. So I think the biggest way to just remind yourself that yes, God hears you would be to be in the word. Think of all of the times where people came to Jesus for help and he healed them or he answered their prayers. Remember John 11 that we just read. I know that you always hear me. Um, that kind of helps with the head knowledge. And sometimes once we get the head knowledge down, the heart knowledge will follow. Um, another thing though to remember is prayer isn't based on how we feel, right? My relationship with Jamie is not dependent on whether I get warm fuzzies when I'm around her. Like I do, and I love spending time with her, but we have a good, great friendship and relationship, even if we don't like gaze into each other's eyes adoringly and talk about, you know, how glad we are to be friends and to be doing this podcast together. So it's not always about your feelings. And that's something else that you can remind yourself. Sometimes you might need to just pull up that, um, what am I trying to say? Pull, draw from that deep seated knowledge and faith that you know God hears you because the Bible tells you that He does. Yeah. No, I think that's, and that's where affirming truth, either through just yes. scripture or mm -hmm. biblical affirmations, is really yeah. important. And you can, I think that's like, you know, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. That's how we fight the enemy, that's how we stick mm -hmm. it to Him when these lies and when this, you know, because I think that's when we believe that God isn't hearing us based on our experience, based on what our heart tells us and the heart is deceitful mm -hmm. above all yes. things, mm -hmm. we are standing on a false foundation and, and we need yes. to, to start from the ground up, stand on that solid rock of scripture. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm using so many like mixed metaphors or analogies, but stand on the solid <laughs> rock of scripture, wield that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. <laughs> What and other use that sword to stick it to the devil. Stick it to the enemy. <laughs> All right. Are we getting sacrilegious? <laughs> I don't think so. I, when we're okay, talking good, about the enemy, I, I, get, I think getting passionate is okay. 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 Good to know. Maybe. Um, you know, let's, let's zoom out a tiny bit as well. And not just for you, Rebecca, but for anybody listening, let's cover what is a basic, but I feel like probably Jamie and I don't cover it, is that you need to start by being 100% convinced that you have a relationship with God. You mm -hmm. need to start yes. knowing that your sins have been forgiven and that when you ask Jesus to forgive your sins, he saves you from an eternity separated from him. Um, once you get to that part, hey, amen, welcome to the family. You've got a relationship with God, which means that he does always, always hear you. But let's, let's at least remind people um, a lot of the promises in scripture are for Christians. And basically everything that Jamie and I talk about on the show are for people who have been saved. And so if you guys have questions about that, please reach out to us, reach out to a Christian that you know to make sure that that is covered. But the real, you know, the, uh, the five second version is you are saved, not by believing that Jesus is, you know, God, not by believing the Bible is true. You are saved when you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and to take away the punishment that you deserve, which is eternity separated from him. Once you cover that step, now is where we get to talk all about the relationship. It's almost like, you know, trying to do marriage counseling with a couple that haven't gotten married yet, right? I think <laughs> gotta, that's so important. You got to start where you got to start. No, I think that's so important. And we don't talk about that a lot. We haven't talked about yeah. that a lot as a very basic foundation, but it is very possible to go to church every Sunday, yep. to a cultural 
Christian faith yes. or mm -hmm. just a like general knowledge of God and sort of belief in yeah. God. Yeah, and being a good spiritual person and yeah. still not and have still, a saving knowledge. Yeah. And so I really, yeah, let's let's just put it out there. Email us at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com and um, we have resources we can hook you up with or, you know, if you mm -hmm. have specific questions about what it means to be saved, what it means to, mm -hmm. to be a, a regenerated soul that, that has yeah. relationship with God, because that is, mm -hmm. that's the foundation. That is the absolute yes. foundation of any communication with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and so now let's move over into kind of the consistency side of this question. It's hard to pray consistently. Um, and definitely once you address the question of, does God even hear me? That's going to help. But what other tips can we throw out for people who are struggling to maintain a consistent prayer life? I think, um, I don't know. There are uh, one thing that I think is a hang up is just feeling like you're, you're, beating a dead horse. Like you're just saying the yeah. same thing over and over again until it becomes a habit instead of mm -hmm. an actual communication. So I think consistent prayer doesn't always mean praying the same exact prayer. I think showing up in the presence of God, if, if what you've been doing before hasn't been working, just going to God and saying, God, let's say it's praying for a spouse. Uh, that's just mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. okay, God, I'm, I'm single. I want to be married. Please send me a spouse. And it's been 10 years of praying this prayer every single day. And you're just like, this is not working. I feel betrayed. I feel God isn't listening. I've got, I see these other people getting married around me and it's hurtful. It's painful. I'm disappointed. Um, I think maybe never stop showing up. You have to still keep showing up, but maybe approaching God with a different, through a different lens or with a different type of prayer could mm -hmm. make that showing up easier where you maybe go to him Definitely. with a question, like, God, teach me how to pray for this yeah. longing in my heart. Yeah. And then, I'm going to pull it. Oh, go ahead. Finish. Yeah. Oh, well then, then maybe read scripture and see where God leads you or, or, you know, meditate on, on one passage and just see if anything jumps out or be silent with God and, and just see if, you know, God reveals anything to you. So those are just mm -hmm. shifting the way that you're praying about that thing might mm -hmm. make the consistency easier rather than just think so. the same exact it thing. Doesn't have to be the same exact same. Doesn't even have to be at the same exact time. For some people, they love that. But like we we've, we've been talking about recently, like it it really comes down to what works for you. Mm -hmm. For some people, praying from seven to seven thirty every single morning is the exact way that they are meant to start their day. It works well with their schedule. It works well with their physiology. It works well with their personality for other people, just praying throughout the day or, you know, having a busy week and having a big old long chunk, like a, a personal retreat with God on the weekends. It can mm -hmm. look different. So I'm going to pull a Jamie and refer you to several different other episodes that might, might help in this area. So 48 is another coffee break on spicing up your prayer life and how sometimes we kind of can get in a rut in our prayers. Um, so episode 48, episode 49 is called creative ways to use your prayer journal that you might not have thought of before. So again, if you're just looking for something to, to feel a little new, like our brains are wired, like we get this itty bitty dopamine hit when we try something new. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that's all you need to, um, spice up your prayer life. Like, um, episode 48 talks about, and then one more to point you to is episode 51, which is called how to have more fun in your prayer life, which again, maybe is kind of, if, if you feel like your prayer times have lack have gotten really lackluster, maybe it's time to explore some of these more creative options, um, creative prayer journaling, spicing up your prayer life, having more fun in your prayers. Those are all things that, that might help. I also think finding a prayer partner. I remember there was a time yeah. in my life when um, I really wanted another child and my husband wasn't on the same page and mm. I wasn't going to 
make him <laughs> change his mind mm-hmm. and that wouldn't have worked anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I just really, I found another friend and we were praying for the same thing. Um, she was praying for her first child and we became prayer partners and we might've even mm-hmm. already been prayer partners, but those, yeah. those were the big things I think that drew us together mm-hmm. to pray and to find someone who either shares the same thing. Like if it's singleness, maybe someone else who's single yeah. praying for that same thing or a mentor, an older woman that's, you know, can help you in, um, maybe shaping your prayers or, or giving you advice on those things at the same time as praying, but maybe it's just finding one, or maybe it's someone praying for something totally different, but just a yeah. partner, because I think that helps, you know, the Bible says when one of us is weak, the other yeah. help lift mm-hmm. the other one up. Um, yeah. And another thing to keep in mind, this, this was a paradigm shift. I love this. Um, so we interviewed Crystal Evans Hurst, um, a few weeks ago and we've aired that episode already. So I know to point you back to it. Um, and it's called the 28 day prayer journey with Crystal Evans Hurst. And, um, she, in a different podcast episode that I was listening to a while back, she said something that was amazing. She said, whenever you're praying to God, um, it, and it's, we think, you know, does prayer work or does it not work? Mm-hmm. Prayer, prayer works. God hears us. And, and we, we sometimes judge whether it works or not by whether we get the outcome that we want. Right. What she said was God's promises, you know, are yes. And amen in Jesus. So be it. Yes. His promises are there. God is always responding to our heart desires and our prayers with a mm. yes, but that yes might mean that the specific thing that you're asking for is a no. Mm. So wherever right. you're receiving a no, it's because there's another yes. So yeah. her recommendation is chase the yes. Look for where is that yes being given? So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe the yes is there's something I need to do in you before this yeah. particular thing, or maybe there's something timing wise that has to be orchestrated that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But just to right. have, have faith and trust that God's response to you is a yes. I love you. So be it mm-hmm. blessing mm-hmm. and gifts. And, but it may not be the exact yes to the specific thing that you're asking for right. in the way that, that you're asking. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that it's a, like a failed prayer. No. I really, I love, this came up in a conversation we had a little bit ago, how, you know, I don't think that we can become dogmatic about it, but just this concept of what if God takes our prayers and through the Holy spirit who is, you know, interceding for us and who is, um, helping us pray because we're weak. We don't know how we should pray. Mm -hmm. Maybe the prayers that we're saying are kind of like filtered through the Holy spirit. So when, when I pray, God, please don't let my son have COVID. He knows truly that what I'm praying is for my family to be safe and at peace during this time. Maybe my kid does, you know, I don't even want to say, you know, maybe someone gets sick, but what he really understands is that I'm wanting peace and a sense of safety in my home. And he can still grant that even if someone falls ill or, you know, let's take it to an extreme. We are praying for somebody to be healed from a very serious illness and that person passes away, but God takes that prayer that we were praying for their healing and, and makes it a prayer for peace and salvation and, you know, a sense of rest and closure, right? I think that there, the Bible is at least open to the thought because, you know, um, I think it's in Romans, you know, we don't know how to pray how we should, but the Holy Spirit prays for us and groans that words can't express and all, you know, all we've got are words. And so sometimes I think it can be really amazing if we think that like a prayer has fallen on deaf ears, maybe it's gone through this filter, right? Like, picture a sci-fi voice distorting machine or something. So when I pray, God, please give me a million dollars. God hears God, please make sure that my family is always provided for. Right. And that's the prayer that gets answered, you know? Yeah, no, I could totally see that. And yeah, I think when we shift our perspective from recognize, I think it opens our eyes to other ways that God could be working. Because if we have the, mm-hmm. the you know, thoroughbred, racehorse blinders on Mm -hmm. and we're only looking for, you know, I'll go back to the spouse. We're only looking for God provide me with a spouse Mm -hmm. now. 
Yeah. We, we fail to see some other things that God might be doing. Like maybe, exactly. maybe, you know, and, and I think Thanksgiving plays a huge part in this where when we yeah. take those blinders off one really powerful way to show up in prayer, when you're feeling disappointed about a specific prayer or a, a group of specific prayers is mm-hmm. to just go into praising God or giving yeah. thanks for what you do have and what he is Mm -hmm. doing or even a prayer. God, show me how you're at work. Give me glimpses of your fingerprints on my life and these God incidences that happen, these people that you're bringing Mm -hmm. into my life, these situations that you're working for my good, maybe outside of that one thing. And I think that will Mm -hmm. just glorify God. It will minister to us. It will build our spirit up and Mm -hmm. and it can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And another thing to remember is like, God knows you so much better than you do. So it's like, you know, when the four-year-old asks you for a remote control car for Christmas, and you know that if you buy that remote control car, like it's going to be broken by New Year's, right? And you, or that he's just, he's going to lose parts or, you know, that it's not the best, but you also know that he just loves cars. And so you're Mm. able to find something else. You get in like pajamas and bed sheets that have cars and aren't ever going to get lost. You know, that's, it's a silly example, but just remember like, so going back to the person praying for a spouse, when you, when you've got a heart, heart, heartfelt prayer like that, I really encourage you to dive into the deeper root. Mm. Are you praying for a spouse or kind of like me and my son, am I praying for my son to be healthy today? Or what is what I truly, truly desire for my family to have a sense of peace and security and not have to live in fear. Mm -hmm. And those are separate things. And so maybe you think that what your heart absolutely desires is a spouse. But what God knows is that the deep, true desire of your heart is to have love and community and a sense of family, right? And the more you recognize how he's already answering those kinds of prayers for you, I think, again, that leads to that gratitude like you were just talking about. Yeah. It reminds me of um, when I went on a mission trip after college to Kenya, I didn't really know a whole lot about what I was getting into or where, I mean, I know a little bit about that it was rural Kenya in the Cario Valley, but I didn't know exactly what it was going to be like. And Mm -hmm. it was, I guess there was internet. There was, I don't think there was Google back then, but you could still, you know, through what was it? America online or product. Uh, what was, you've got mail. Yeah. But you could search. Le- I forget what it was, but anyway, you dog could search pile. stuff. I don't even know, <laughs> but that just sounds awful. Dog pile. Oh, dog That's pile. That's what it was. Not the pile that a dog leaves. No, like a, a pile, pile of, dogs. of dogs or a pile. Mm-hmm. Of, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I prayed specifically because I have a, fear of spiders. Right. And I prayed very specifically that God would not allow there to be spiders where I went. Mm -hmm. And when I was in the car with the family that met me in Nairobi and drove me out to rural Kenya, they, I asked them, one of the first questions was, you know, kind of apologetically, I'm like, so are there, you know, you guys have spiders? And the guy, Bob just laughed. He kind of cackled. He's like, yeah. Right. huge ones and I said are mm-hmm. you kidding or serious and they're like totally Aww. serious that Aww, first Jamie. night oh there was a <laughs> it was there were some time there it was hard it was hard I Aww. won't get into all the stories but I just the very first two two short stories first night okay. I got there I opened the drawer to the little chest of drawers to put my clothes in and there was this huge spider it looked like um I, they looked a little like wolf spiders. I don't know what they're called, but it was like, uh-huh. it was big. Yeah. I mean, like big, big, big. Mm-hmm. And it scampered across a little scamper. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> the drawer, the empty uh-huh. drawer. And I closed it real quick. And I was like, and, and they were both asleep already. Oh, and I didn't no. know what to do. So I prayed. I was like, oh God, help me. I don't know what to do. Cause it was right next yeah. to my bed. I knew mm. that thing was going to come out anyway. I didn't know what to do and I prayed and within seconds, miraculously, the wife came out of her room to go to the bathroom because the bathroom was in the hallway. And I said, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm so glad you came out. There's a spider in my drawer and I'm so scared of spiders. And she's like, no problem. She pulls the drawer out. She did not kill it. She liked, she liked spiders. Mm -hmm. She pulled it out. She actually like touched it to keep it from getting out of the drawer. Uh She did not Uh care whatsoever. Not a big deal. Yeah. Um, 
that was faith building for me. And the entire mm -hmm. experience, yeah. I won't go into the second story, but yeah, okay. the whole experience was very faith building for me. I think right. kind of like, you know, you've shared with some of your attempts at desensitizing yourself to your mm -hmm. fear of fish. Mm -hmm. I think it helped me with my fear of spiders cool. in the long run. I ended up not being as scared. So yeah. God knew what I needed and it actually mm -hmm. built me up to be in that you know, it, it's a refining sometimes yeah. to go through trials as big or small as they are. I mean, that was like sure. really small in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But if we have a, yeah. No, go ahead and finish. No, no, that's it. That's good. Okay. I, your spider story reminded me when I was a teenager and I was babysitting for this family and it was my first time babysitting for them. And it was a pretty young baby, like probably not quite crawling it, you know, so little, little baby. Um, I was just going to be there for a couple of hours. They, they gave me all the instructions about the baby, as you can imagine. Um, and then they left. And then their dog, who wasn't very big, you know, like maybe a 20, 25 pound dog decided it did not like me. And it made me really nervous because I hadn't even mentioned the dog and the dog was fine until they left. And then, you know, the dog's like, who is this stranger touching this baby? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so it was like growling. It was barking. <laughs> I looked at it. And at that point, we didn't have like pet dogs. I was less comfortable around dogs to begin with. I looked at it. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, be quiet. <laughs> and, and he just kind of looked at me and then just walked away. And like at that moment as like a 13 or 14 year old, I was like, oh, prayer works. And now I'm probably like, okay, dogs recognize an assertive voice. <laughs> but right? still, I love it. it. Maybe it was a mix of both. That is pretty cool. That's a cool story. Yeah, yeah, so I just picture you, you know, like talking to that spider in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, go back from whence you came. <laughs> yeah. And where it came from was under your mattress. No, oh, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I should not was, have said that. that I'm was really low. sorry. That I'm was really sorry. Blow. I did it. Yeah. I said it to be funny, and then I'm like, oh, that probably wasn't funny. It's still funny. One thing though, these spiders that we lived in, like a, I stayed in a block house made of cinder blocks mm -hmm. and they, what I think it was cooler cause it was, you know, pretty warm where we were mm -hmm. lived on my wall, on the inside mm -hmm. of my wall. Mm -hmm. And I thought as long as I, I made an agreement with them, there were at any given time, like on the wall with the window across from the bed, there were at any given time, three to five spiders just hanging out on the block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, as long as you stay on Good. your side, please. Yeah. But it was this far, no farther, no yeah. farther. So yeah. Well, you know why I love spiders, don't you? They eat mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. So I have anytime to tell myself I that. see one, I'm like, God bless you. You keep on doing what you do. Yeah. <laughs> I save spiders now. Um, I, okay. yeah, I save them most of the time. Every once in a while, if it's in my house and it's really creepy looking, I'll just be mm -hmm. like, look, dude, we had an agreement. You stay outside, <laughs> I stay inside. Yeah, when you yeah. cross the threshold, sometimes there's a time when I have sometimes to Sometimes you might get stepped on. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I try to save spiders when I can, because I agree, spiders are mm -hmm. better than mosquitoes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, well, we have, we have solved both of our phobias. We've solved Rebecca's question. I think yes. we're, we're ready to call it a wrap. All right. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of add? Otherwise, I would love to kind of close with a prayer for Rebecca and her situation. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, I guess we need to do prayers for the unsaved before we pray for Rebecca, right? Do we have to do it in that order? Or do you think that sometimes in the spirit of spicing up our prayer lives that we could do it in the other order? You know what? Let's do it. Let's shake it up. <laughs> Pray for Rebecca first. Okay. Okay. And, and you stop me if it gets to, to the point of discomfort. You stop okay. me and then we'll do it the way. I will. <laughs> the way we normally do it. All right. God, we do thank you for Rebecca, and we thank you so much for her question, for her heart. I pray for everybody who is listening right now who has been through a season feeling distant from you, and I just pray that you would draw us close to you. We're just please remember, God, that we are... Um, we're weak and we need reassurance from our daddy that you are with us and that you love us and that you hear us. We also truly do pray for anybody who's listening who hasn't taken a step of faith to to ask for that invitation into your family and to ask for forgiveness for their sins. And we just pray that you would be calling those people into your family, into that precious gift of salvation um, and into a relationship with you. And I do pray specifically for Rebecca that she would not feel forsaken. 
I pray that if there are just prayer disappointments, that she would find um, find healing from those and that you would be so close to her and that you would give her so much encouragement. And we do just thank you for her question. We thank you for our listeners. We thank you for this community that you're building here in Praying Christian Women, where we can have these discussions and these conversations, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, now you've thrown me off because I'm I guess so I'll do, sorry. No, 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 not at all. No, I will. I'll do prayers for the unsaved next, right? We, we'll okay. do our. Is there yeah. something else we need to do? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, let's yeah. do prayers for the unsaved. Okay, prayers it's your turn. Unsaved. I'm tired of carrying all the weight around here, Jamie. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, prayers for the unsaved. So, for those of you that don't know, these are prayers. We actually have 30 of them. And if you go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, you can receive all of these prayers so that you can be praying on your own. You don't have to wait for our coffee break episodes to pray for the one to five-ish people that God has put on your heart to pray for. Um, I actually have one of the people on my list has come to know the Lord. I think I talked about it a few months ago, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, it, It was, it was just amazing. It was amazing. So I'm really excited. And we would love to hear your stories. If you've been praying Mm -hmm. for someone, share them with us. We want to hear those too. Um, Mm -hmm. Because God is hearing. And the idea is that we have this list that God puts on our heart, that it's not so big that we're overwhelmed, but Mm -hmm. that it's small enough that we can say, we're going to pray for these people until God removes that burden for that person or until Mm -hmm. we know that they're saved. So yeah, so let's pray. Dear God, please send your message to my friend. Give me opportunities and boldness to share the gospel with them. Please use others as well, people who will show them your love and your truth. Please protect my friend from well-meaning Christians who would turn them away from you by their words or actions. Allow my friend to foster strong relationships with believers who will lift them up in prayer and point them to you. Help me, Lord, to find the right words to say when the time comes to share my faith with my friend. Please direct the conversations we have in such a way that they will want to know about your truth. Open their ears and their hearts so the discussion will lead them to the truth. Thank you, God, that you've given us the chance to help spread your word. Let me be faithful, Lord, and please turn my friend into a believer who will also lead many people to a saving faith in Christ by their testimony. Amen. Amen. And if you guys have topics for us to cover in future Coffee Break episodes, please send those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. We love the interaction that we get when you guys submit topics for us to consider for our show this way. So thanks again for being here, guys. God bless you, and we will talk to you later.